Welcome back to the Spacecraft Guide, where we explore great spacecraft and explain how they work. In this episode, we worked on panel three and three stabilizer control switches. We go over gimbal lock and why gimbal lock was so bad on going to the moon. But first, here is the work we did on this week. We worked on panel three and three of the switches, the dead band switch, the gyro test switch, and the gyro test signal switch. All three of these switches dealt with getting the signal to the uh, flight director attitude indicator, which are these things here, which leads us to our topic that I want to talk in this episode of gimbal lock. Here we start to see the capsule start to spin in the X and then in the Y and finally the Z axis. In this vin video, gimbal lock visually looks like the man in the capsule goes backwards or changes direction for a quick second. As you can see, it doesn't lock up the device. It is just a quick change in direction as the two axes cross. We would like to thank the NASA Glenn Research Center for this video. This is a gyroscope, and it uses a centripetal force, a spinning wheel, to balance itself. But another thing it does is it keeps its inner orientation no matter how you move its base. Because of the ability to keep its orientation, or aeronautical engineers could use it as artificial horizon to flying clouds. Aerospace engineers use this device to create a stable platform for spacecraft to navigate in space. Here is the Inertial Measuring Unit, or the IMU. It is a device which measures the orientation of the spacecraft. It uses gyroscopes to create a stable platform from which changes in orientation can be measured. In order for the ship to move around the stable platform, the stable platform is put into a mechanical device which uses rings, as you see here, to allow movement along the X, Y, and Z axis thus giving full range of motion in every direction. These rings are, mechan are a mechanical device called gimbals. And by measuring the angles between the gimbals, we measure orientation of the spacecraft and display it on the Flight Director Attitude Indicator, FDAI. Gimbal lock is when two of the gimbals here line up and have no angle between them. This is seen as the jet points up and two axes overlap. This is measured by the computer as an angle of zero, and when the computer tries to calculate the orientation, it becomes confused and no longer gives the spacecraft orientation correctly in the flight director attitude indicator. The zero angle confusion is a trigonometry problem and needs its own video in order to be explained correctly. For simplicity's sake, let's just say the answer is infinity and the computer can't count that high. We would like to thank Gorilla CG for this video. Here is the FDAI that displays the spacecraft orientation. The issue with Apollo 13 wasn't that two gimbals were aligning. It was that three gimbals were lining up. Once all three gimbals lined up, they couldn't realign by themselves to give an orientation on the flight director attitude indicator. But how do you tell astronauts they are approaching all three gimbals from aligning? you put a big red dot on the FDAI. In Apollo 13, the astronauts were fighting to stay out of this red dot as they struggled 
to get control of their spacecraft. Was the issue with Apollo 13 that they couldn't get out of gimbal lock? No. They do several navigation checks, which basically uh, correct their orientation as the gyros tend to drift, and they need to correct by looking at the star charts. The problem is that doing a navigation check takes time, and Apollo 13 didn't have time. As a matter of fact, they only had a few minutes of power left when they came back into the uh, atmosphere. So for the command module to do a realignment after a gimbal lock would have taken a lot of time and that Apollo 13 didn't have. We're in the update to the Apollo exhibit and you can get them by clicking on, we scroll down here, you can click on get access to this exhibit here. This will take you to the Apollo spacecraft exhibit, allowing you to click on components of the Apollo command module and lunar module. Thank you for joining me on my video here of explaining on Gimbal Lock. And if you would like to see more of these videos and the interactive uh, spacecraft exhibit on the Apollo spacecraft, please go to Patreon on the S and click go to SIVR Museum or the Spacecraft Interactive Virtual Museum and become a Patreon. That's the best way to support us. There are several price ranges for you to do and we hope to see you again next week when we uh, do some more work on our exhibit of the Apollo spacecraft.